In this video, we're going to go over variables in PHP. Now, there are three basic types of variables, string variables, numeric variables, and arrays. We will deal with strings and numbers in this video, arrays we will talk about at a later time. Now, the most important thing is in PHP, you must place a dollar symbol at the beginning of all your variable names. There is a reason for this, actually, and it makes it much faster for PHP to know that you are declaring a variable so it improves the overall performance. So once again, you have to put this before every variable. That is not negotiable. So this is our variable name right here. Now you can name these in almost any way you want, except for a few exceptions, and here they are. You can't start your variable name with numbers, so I can't put a one here. That's not gonna work. You also cannot use hyphens, so no hyphens are allowed. You can, however, use underscores. Those are allowed. You cannot use white space, so I can't put any white space in the variable name. It has to be one continuous set of characters. Now, if you do want white space, I suggest you use a underscore in its place. And of course, the biggest rule, as I said before, you need a dollar symbol at the beginning of every variable that you declare. Now, there are a couple of rules that are considered good coding practice in PHP. The first is put all of your variables in lowercase. Do not mix and match your case. Keep them all in lowercase. You can put them all in uppercase if you want, but I wouldn't recommend that. I would keep them all in lowercase. If you use several words in your variable, you should separate them with an underscore. So if I, for instance, if I spelled var out to variable, I would probably put an underscore right there. Or if you have three or four names in your variable, that's fine, but just separate each word by a underscore and that makes it much easier to read. Now, as I said in the last video, this is an entire statement. Now, the first part, we declare the variable and we are just giving it a name. In the second part, we are assigning a value to this variable. So think of a variable as a container. It just stores whatever data we want to hold to use later on. We assign values to the variable. In this case, we are assigning this string value to this variable. Once we have the data stored in the variable, we can use it over and over again. That's the great thing about variables. You don't have to type out the data over and over again. You can just reference the variable name because this set of characters in this string is now stored in this variable name. And of course, it is done using this equal sign. So think of it something similar to boxes that you have at home. You store things in those boxes and put stickers on the boxes to identify what's inside them. So the box would be the variable name that stores our string variable. Then when you come back later, they are there and you know what's inside them. Now the quotation marks signify that this is a string, which of course contains characters. Now what's different here than from many other languages is we don't have to define the data type. If you took my Java series, you will remember you, you always had to define the data type. But in PHP, and similar to JavaScript actually, you do not have to declare the data type. PHP will actually do it for us automatically when we set the value. And it does it because it realizes these quotes here are going to be a string data type. So PHP just does it automatically for us. So this variable again will hold a string and we can use it at a later time. And we're gonna use it very quickly. So in this case, let's go ahead and use it with echo so we can output this string variable to the browser. So you will remember from the last video, we just type in echo and then we can just go ahead and reference our variable name. It's that simple. And then remember, every statement has to be closed with a semicolon. And so now this will output the contents of this variable, which of course is this string. So let's go ahead and save this. Now open up the browser that you wanna use. In this case, I'm going to use Chrome. You'll see here I set a favorite to my localhost lesson.php so I no longer have to type this in. You may wanna do that too because we're gonna be using this file over and over for a while. So if I hit this, there you can see we got our output. Now, as I said, there are also number variables which can contain, you guessed it, numbers. So we can store numbers, which, which is very useful if we wanna do math and all sorts of different things. So uh, let's go ahead and rename our variable to something a little bit more relevant. We'll call it integer var. And all you do is put in the number that you want. So let's put in 22, that's what we're gonna use. Now you'll notice this time we don't need the double quotes. Once PHP sees that this is a number, it knows that it's an integer data type. And by the way, you can also put decimals here. So if we wanted to make this 22.7, you can do that. But we're just gonna make this 22. And then we have to put our new variable name right here. So we'll just call this integer, very simple. And let's go ahead and save this. And then we'll rerun this in our browser. And there you can see we got the output that we wanted, 22. Okay, that's gonna do it for this video. I will see you guys in the next video.